What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel for Ask Slapshot episode 4 where we answer your questions. So here we go. We're going to jump into the first question for today's video which comes from our good friend Chad. He says, not so hypothetical question. The year is 2024 and Slapshot Pops has grown to a whopping 100,000 subscribers. I don't know if that's going to happen, Chad, but we appreciate your optimism. Funko is rewarding... 2024 is like tomorrow. Yeah. Funko is rewarding both of you by turning you both into sodas. We better be limited. What are you wearing? How are you positioned? And what are you holding? That's a lot of questions. That's, that's pretty good. You go first. Me go first. Um, me go first. Me go first. <laughs> I would love to be wearing maybe a little Slapshot Pops t-shirt, maybe holding a little Boba Fett. And um, I could see me just, you know, doing like a relaxed pose and then, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy because there's not really too much you can do when it comes to sodas. And maybe for the chase, maybe I'm holding like a Freddy or something. I don't know. So nothing. I don't want to make it too complicated for Funko. You know, we're, we're just very grateful that they chose us to be sodas. I don't want to go too crazy here, but all right. Oh my God. This is a loaded question. We should have pre-screened it. What am I wearing? I don't know. That's so simple. Like you just chose like a t-shirt and jeans. I want to be like a superhero. Dress me up. Like, you know how like Freddie Funko dresses up as people. I want to be something either, I don't know, either like Wonder Woman or Harley oh, Quinn or cool. Sailor cool. Moon. I want to have a costume. You. Okay. And then what position? I don't know. Like probably like a superhero position. Like, yeah. Superhero. No, yeah. like probably the first one that oh, you did. Oh, you're like yeah, you're like flying. Yeah, That's, like, I want to be flying. Crime. I want to figure that out. And what am I holding? It depends on what superhero I am. Fair enough. Um, shout out to Chase Chaser. He actually made custom soda concepts of us and uh, we'll throw that up on the screen for you guys to enjoy. He did a very good job. But yes, he did. I like that. So thank you for the question, Chad. All right. Next question comes from Elena. She says, I love Ask Slapshot because we get to know more about you two. I'm thinking about going to a few cons this year, Ooh. including Niagara Falls Comic Con. Oh, I heard you saying something about maybe attending that con. So my question to you two is what cons are you planning on going to this year? If you are going to Niagara Falls Comic Con, I hope to see you there. Well, Elena, we have some very good news. We will be going to Niagara Falls Comic Con. As of right now, it is the only con that we are locked in for. We got our tickets, or we don't have our tickets, but we have our hotel booked, and um, you know we have days off requested for my job. So that con, we are definitely going to. A um, few other smaller cons we'd like to hit up this year. We're definitely not going to San Diego Comic Con. We're definitely not going to Mega Con. Um, those have been some common questions we've gotten lately. LA. Definitely not going to LA Comic Con. Anything um, on the West Coast, you can probably cross us off yeah. this year. But uh, we might, we're still up in the air for New York Comic Con. Um, I would like to go to some smaller cons this year, like Rhode Island Comic Con is definitely in the cards. So we're still working that out, trying to see what we have in our budget. But yes, we are very much looking forward to Niagara Falls, and we hope to see you there. And by the way, guys, if you have a question that you would like to ask us and have it potentially featured in a future video, it can be about collecting, it can be about the channel, it can be about... Anything you want to know about us, drop it down in the comments section below, and maybe we'll pick it for the next episode. All right, next question comes from Seriously Star Wars, which I love that name, first off. Right this off this should be a John question. Yeah, this, it's just, this is... It's just a John question. This is a John question right here. What Funko Pop from the Star Wars prequels would you like to see made? Now... There's a lot of Star Wars characters they haven't made. This is a very common question. We've been getting a lot from the prequels. I would love to see an Asajj, Asajj Ventress pop. I know that's a pop of a character that a lot of people have been wanting. I think also Funko is missing a huge opportunity. It hit me a few months back and I really wanted to put it out there. So you guys know Funko has made some Star Wars rides. They've made Boba Fett and the Slave One, Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. How cool would it be if they made like an Obi-Wan and his Starfighter, like all these other other, there's so many cool yeah. ships. There's, all, there's so many cool ships in Star Wars, and they haven't made that many pop rides. So I think there's definitely a lot of really cool pop rides, especially the, from They're the prequels. Big. Pop rides are big. Well, well, not the the Boba Fett. The Boba Fett one came in a pretty small box. It doesn't take up that much space. That size is perfect. But yeah, those are a few characters I would love to see be made. All right, next question we have comes from Madness sixty nine. They said, what was both of your hardest Funko Pops to get? Smiley face, love your content. 
Um, what was your hardest pop to get? I think probably the Sugar Skull Jack Skellington Ooh. was probably my That favorite. one was so crazy. And then it shows up in a collection. I'm, I'm so upset. It <laughs> took me over a year to find it in good condition. And then uh, two weeks ago, I opened up a collection and there he was, mint. Crazy. Um, hands down, my hardest Funko Pop to get was Freddy Funko as Boba Fett. Took me... I feel like he gets brought up almost every single video now. So um, Jack Skellington. Took me, Funko, Boba Fett. <laughs> it took me six years to track down, but very happy to have both of these pops in the collection. So thank you for the question. Next up comes from fellow content creators, The Proper Popper. They said, I am always curious as a fellow Freddy Funko fan, what would you both like to see mixed with Freddy? One day that had not been made before. Save for a video, please. Well, here we are in a video. Um, I know right off the bat, I cannot believe they haven't made Captain America Freddy Funko. I actually got a custom one from Rock and Row for my birthday. I absolutely love that pop, and um, I can't believe they haven't made a Freddy Funko as Captain America yet. I was going to say the same thing, the Captain America yeah. one. Yeah. There's so many other cool characters out there, yet they have done repeats. I mean, we've gotten a bunch of Freddy Funko as Batman. There's, there's a lot of characters they've done multiple times, so... A lot of other characters I would love to see, but Don't yeah. we have like 72 Squid Game ones? Yeah, there's all these Squid Game Freddy Funkos that are not that great. So yeah, come on, Captain America uh, Funko, let's make it happen. Next pop, or next question comes from Easton Pops. He said, what are your Star Wars Celebration Funko Pop predictions? Well, last year, actually the last two years, Star Wars Celebration Funko Pops have been very disappointing. This year is the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Um, episode six. Um, so I think that I know that might not have meant much to you, but um, they're probably going to do something surrounding OG characters. I know that's not what everybody wants, but my predictions and my expectations for Star Wars Celebration are not high. Probably to get some other kind of Grogu pop because of how popular he is. Yeah. I don't. I don't foresee anything another too crazy. Probably no, yeah, another Mandalorian. Yeah, but I would love to see some other characters be made. Probably not going to happen this Maybe year. Maybe a Ray. <laughs> yeah, maybe a Ray. So next question comes from Uncle Tim. So Uncle Tim says, great video, y'all. That's cool that you take questions. So let me ask, how and when did you get into hockey? So I started playing hockey from a very young age. I started skating around the age of two. Um, pretty much before I can remember, I was on the ice and everything. Played my entire life. Um, played in high school, played in college. Um, got really into refereeing for a while, and now I just, you know, Play, play for fun. Play for fun when I can. So, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Hockey's been a very important part of my life and a huge passion, and obviously it's leaked into this channel. So just a little, just a little bit. Next question comes from Dr. John Pops. What's up, Dr. John? He says, "Hey guys, been enjoying this new segment for your videos. Friday video drops are my favorite of the week. Friday's the best." My question is, if you work for Funko or Lego, what is one thing you would realistically and unrealistically change about either company to make it better for collectors slash builders? I would probably have like a like a team that goes through requests. Okay. So, you know, you put your requests once a month, you have like an hour to put your requests. You, okay. like, and then you have like, um, like it could only be like, because I'm sure there's going to be thousands of requests. Mm. So it only has like, I don't know, like 60 characters. So yeah. you can only write one sentence. And then um, probably choose one of those requests to be made. You yeah, know, that's pretty once cool. a quarter. That's I think cool. that's what I would do for both companies. Because there's all these requests. I know Lego has Lego, Lego ideas. ideas yeah. um, and that's kind of how it is. So I think um, for those who... Because there's a lot of Lego idea builders. But there's a lot of people who have ideas. But they're not like mock builders. Right. So that's why I would do it for both um, companies. Okay. Just have somebody go through um, requests. But then... The person who gets chosen, I don't know, they get one or five of this item. That's yeah. it. Like, no royalties, because, you know, right, company right, with royalties yeah, yeah. gets tricky. But yeah. they get, like, the first five. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, well, since we're talking about, like, Lego Ideas, this is a great, great program that Lego has. Another great program they have is the Ambassador Network, where they actually have content creators, you know, uh, review and get products early. I think it'd be really cool if Funko had a program like that where they could have certain content creators who they feel 
um, do a good job of promoting their products. Maybe they could send them pops early or kind of similar, get their feedback on what items should be made or what items are doing well, what items are not doing well. I think Funko does overall a good job reaching out to like, uh, you know, overall collectors. You know, they have a lot I of different... I think it's a lot of... I understand because they're saving money because they're using the same molds, but yeah. it gets to the point where it's just so many duplicates, I feel like people are falling off the collection. Yeah, and there's really no, like like you mentioned, Ray. Like, there's so many Ray pops from Star Wars. Like, unless it's, like, super unique or super limited or has a weird, um, you know, variant version of it, people aren't going to collect every single one. So, yeah, I, I but I think if they, kind of like a mix of, like, what we both said, if they got more feedback... Uh, if they had like fan submissions and if they connected more and listened more to content creators because you know we and I'm not just saying for us there's a lot of other good TikTokers, um, YouTube channels, people on Instagram making great Funko content. I think if they <laughs> connected more with that side of the, the media. community. The, I think they just need a better media. Yeah a better media team so if they connected better with that side of the community it would make the products at the end of the day much better but yeah, great question. All right, so up next, this question this comes from... A lot of Lego. Yeah, there's some Lego questions that leaked in here. But yeah, if you guys have any Lego questions, we're huge Lego fanatics. And I included them in the video because I really appreciate you guys asking the questions. So Gerald Yates says, how do you know when a Lego Star Wars set is being retired? How do you research Legos? So we've done a lot of research on Lego because we're always staying up on, you know, what sets are coming out. And more importantly, what sets are being retired? So for those that's of you, how we buy. Yeah, so for those of you here in the Funko community, um, we have the word vaulted, which means a pop should no longer be made. Should. Should. Careful with that. Um, so they have a similar thing with Lego, although Lego pretty much never makes a set once it's retired. It's like a 99.99%. They're never going to make it again. So a great website that you can check out is Brick Fanatics. Um, they actually published, uh, publish a list of upcoming retired sets, so sets that are going to retire by the end of the year, and it's constantly updating. So when they find out information, they publish it. And there's also some really other great Lego websites out there. Brick Economy is what That's we use to, to uh, track values. It's similar to Pop Price Guide. And something super simple, which you guys are on now, YouTube. YouTube uh, is great YouTubers, too. YouTubers, yeah. there's a lot of Lego YouTubers. You type in Star Wars sets or any Lego sets, any version of a theme you're looking for retiring in 2023 or retired in 2022 and you're bound to find like two to four videos of each one. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of great people out there who put out a lot of great Lego content. So yeah, if you do some research, you can find out what sets are being retired and um, yeah, you'll be able to pick them up in stores, hopefully before they're no longer available because we all don't want to pay more for whatever collectible we're trying to get on the aftermarket. So great question though. All right, next question comes from Dylan. He says, what is your favorite Star Wars pop or soda that you own? I, too, am a big Star Wars fan and collector. Personally, mine is the glow-in-the-dark Target exclusive Electrocuted Darth Vader. It was my first Star Wars pop and still holds a special place in my collection. Love the channel. Oh, well, thank you so much, Dylan. I would have to say, um, well, my favorite Star Wars pop. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm really feeling the, the Boba Fett and the Slave One. That is, I, I walked by it the other day, and I was like, man, that's such an underrated pop. As far as my favorite soda, probably have to be the Boba Fett uh, white prototype armor chase. That's cool. That's my favorite. So Gary says, for the next question, firstly, been watching. He's in the UK for a long time, and he loves the content. How many Lego helmets slash heads do you have? And how do you decide which three to display just to your right in the videos? I always look forward to seeing what's there. So Gary, that's a keen eye right there because I do uh, switch up the helmet display in the background. So I currently have every single Lego helmet slash headset that they've put out with the exception of the brand new uh, Star Wars helmets that they just came out with, Commander Cody, Captain Rex, and the Leia Boosh helmet. I don't have those because they just came out. We do not rush to get the Lego sets as soon as they drop. Unless um, it's something we really, Unless really... it's like something we have yeah. to have, yeah. But the three that I put in the background are typically ones, you know, right now I have all the Mandalorian helmets back there. You can only see one. Yeah, I have Boba Fett, Mando, and then the Heaven, Heavy Infantry Paz Vizsla back there. That one's a custom one. I don't know how many I have at the moment because we're actually in the process of building another one that's really cool that we can't wait to put on display. 
Um, I would say... We, oh, is that the one I'm building? That's the one you're building, okay. yeah. I think we have around 20. So we do have more than LEGO has actually made because some of them are custom. But. And you can go on the website. Yeah. How do you want to promote the yeah, website? Yeah, absolutely. So they are not custom ones. The designs are not ones that I've come up with. So I want to give credit to those creators. If you guys go to rebrickable.com, it is another great LEGO website where I've built a bunch of designs by... Um, and not you know, just brick heads. Yeah, not just uh, helmets and I mean, brick helmets heads. And, We've done yeah. a bunch of custom stuff. Um, but it's a great website where people can upload their own designs and they actually sell the instructions. They don't sell the pieces. That's from another website. So that's... I know it gets crazy, but if you want to go see all the different helmets that other people have come up with, um, Rebrickable is a great website to check out. And I have about 50 other helmets that I want to build. <laughs> so it's going to get crazy. All right. Last question comes from Sean. And I wanted to end on this question because it's a very interesting one. So Sean says, with all the amazing work and hours you guys put in, do you think there's a long-term future in the channel and Funko Collecting? Have an amazing weekend, guys. Well, what's going on, Sean? Yeah, so this was an interesting one. Uh, so for those of you guys who don't know, we do work very hard on our channel. We put out at least three videos a week. Um, we also do the whatnot auction. So we have a business side to the channel as well because, you know, you need to bring in money to do some of the stuff that we want to do, like traveling to cons, which we mentioned before. I do think there is a long-term term, um, you know, uh, long-term future for Funko collecting. I don't see Funko going anywhere anytime soon. We have seen some highs, some lows. Maybe right now we're in a little like bit of a low point. I think there might be some restructuring. Yes, uh, but I think that, paints. yeah, because Funko is connected to a lot of major licenses. Um, where they have the ability to make a lot of characters that people like in pop culture. I think as long as they have those licenses, they'll be able to put out products mm -hmm. that are desirable, maybe not desirable to a lot of people, but that will give you know something for people to collect for decades to come. So we're just hoping that we can continue to make the best content possible that you guys enjoy so that our channel continues to grow and we can continue having fun in the hobby as well as connecting with you guys on YouTube. I like so. it. Yeah, but thank you guys so much for all the questions. It, it really means a lot that you guys are dropping them down below. So feel free to drop down anything you want to ask us and we'll be sure to feature it in an upcoming episode. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, don't stop shooting till you score. We'll see you all very soon.